Hello and welcome. Today our topic of discussion is autotoxicity and the autotoxic drugs. So what is autotoxicity? It is the process by which number of therapeutically used drugs, certain environmental agents and bacterial toxins cause damage to the end organ of hearing and balance. So from this definition we have learned that autotoxicity can be caused by some drugs as well as some environmental agents as well as some toxins and it can damage either end organ of hearing or end organ of balance or both when it damages end organ of hearing it is called cochlear toxicity when it damages end organ of balance it is called vestibular toxicity and a drug may cause both type of toxicity and together it is called autotoxicity so what are the autotoxic agents there are some drugs. Number one, aminoglycoside antibiotics. These are streptomycin, gentamicin, tobromycin, amikacin, neomycin, natalmycin, cisomycin, etc. Number two are the loop diuretics. That is prusamide or furosemide, ethacrinic acid, bumetanide. Number three is the antimalarial agents that are chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine, quinine. And number four, there are some cytotoxic agents or the antineoplastic agents like cisplatin, carboplatin, antinomycin, bleomycin. Number five, maybe some macrolide antibiotics like azithromycin, erythromycin, clarithromycin. And number six, there are some analgesics and anti inflammatory drugs like salicylates or aspirin, naproxen, ibuprofen phenoprofen, phenylbutazone. Number seven is the polypeptide antibiotics, that is uh, vancomycin, bheomycin. Number eight, the beta blocker, the propanolol. Number nine, there are some contraceptives. Number 10 is the iron chelator agent, like this perioxamine. Number 11 are the environmental solutions, like benzene, toluene, trichloroethylene. And number 12, there are some chemical agents which can cause autotoxicity, like alcohol, tobacco, marijuana, carbon monoxide. Number 13 is the, some miscellaneous antibiotic groups that may be the polymyxin B, polymyxin E also known as cholestine, ampicillin, rifampicin, etc. So to do autotoxicity, the drugs need to enter the inner ear. So how do they enter the inner ear? What are the routes of entry into the inner ear? Number one, they most commonly comes to the inner ear by hematogenous route after systemic administration less commonly number two from oral administration number three they can enter the inner ear after administration of some autotoxic ear drops this occurs when there is tympanic membrane perforation or there is a ventilation tube then through this the drugs first enter into the middle ear then from the middle ear the drugs enter into the inner ear through the membrane that covers both oval window and round window. Number four, bacterial toxins can enter inner ear. For example, from meningitis, the bacterial toxins from CSF can enter the inner ear by a cochlear aqueduct. Now come to the mechanism of action of the drugs. During the discussion of mechanism of action, it will also be classified. On the basis of mechanism of action, it is broadly classified into three categories. Number one, the drugs affecting the stria vascularis. These are loop diuretics and macrolides antibiotic like erythromycin. Loop diuretics causes edema and cystic swelling of the stria vascularis. Number two is the drugs causing impairment of the hair cell function. And uh, these drugs are quinine and salicylates. Quinine causes vasoconstrictions of the smaller blood vessel they supply the stria vascularis and the cochlea. Number three are the drugs that cause destruction of the hair cell. These are aminoglycoside antibiotics, antineoplastic drugs, some environmental solvents. This is a mechanism and one type of classification and these drugs also can be classified as primarily vestibular toxic drugs and cochlear toxic drugs. The primarily vestibular toxic drugs mainly affect the end organ of balance but it may also cause damage to the end organ of hearing at higher dose that's why it is called primarily vestibular toxic 
what are these drugs these drugs are the aminoglycoside antibiotics three aminoglycoside antibiotics streptomycin gentamicin and tropomycin and the antineoplastic drugs are also then the polypeptide drugs like bheomycin and environmental solvent also cause this type of damage and cochleotoxic drugs are the rest of the drugs uh, apart from this and uh, these drugs can also be classified as drugs causing reversible injury and drugs causing irreversible injury irreversible injury is caused by the drugs that are primarily vestibular toxic so what is the pathology here we have already discussed it within the mechanism now outlining it number one there is degeneration of the vascularis. number two there is degeneration of the hair cells in cochlea the outer hair cells are more susceptible to injury than the inner hair cells and the hair cells of the basal turn of the cochlea is more susceptible than the apical region and the degenerative changes decrease gradually from the base of the cochlea towards the apex this is called cochleotopic gradient of susceptibility in the vestibule the type 1 hair cells are more susceptible than the type 2 hair cells and the crystal ampullae are more sensitive than the utricle and sacul macaulay and number three is the degeneration of the auditory nerve this is secondary this occurs secondary to the degeneration of the hair cells so what are the risk factors for autotoxicity number one is the doses increased doses is associated with increased risk number two is the duration increased duration is associated with increased risk due to cumulative effect advanced age impaired renal function impaired liver function and uh, the nutritional status of the patient is also important patient with hyperproteinemia anemia are more susceptible and there is a role of some potentiator like uh, when you use loop diuretics with aminoglycoside antibiotics then loop diuretics potentiate the autotoxic effect of the aminoglycoside some interaction between drugs are also risk factor like aminoglycoside with loop diuretics or noise antineoplastic drugs with loop diuretics or noise environmental solvents with noise this interaction can cause more damage these patients are at more risk another factor is genetic susceptibility some patients are genetically susceptible to aminoglycoside autotoxicity and even a single dose can cause autotoxicity in this kind of patients now what are the clinical features patient presents number one is the tinnitus or giddiness it is the earliest sign because the cochlear damage is often heralded by tinnitus number two is the sensory neural hearing loss and uh, which is more pronounced at the higher frequency number three is the imbalance or vestibular symptom these features can occur during the treatment of autotoxic drug or even can occur after the cessation of treatment with autotoxic agents especially aminoglycosides this is called delayed autotoxicity this is due to long half-life of the drug now come to the treatment number one is the prevention of autotoxicity or protection of the end organ of hearing and balance this can be done if we identify the risk groups first and it is better to avoid autotoxic drug use if there is better alternative and if we have to use the drugs we can use it with some antioxidants autotoxic drugs cause autotoxicity by forming some free radicals there is a hypothesis so the antioxidants can reduce the autotoxic effect these antioxidants are glutathione sodium thiosulfate n-acetylcysteine d-methionine alpha tocopherol and of course we have to maintain adequate hydration and electrolyte balance of the patient so number one was the prevention and protection number two is the early recognition how we can early recognize that the patient is going to have some autotoxicity or having some autotoxicity number one we have to regular monitor the disease with uh, the regular monitoring of the drug levels in the serum regular monitoring of the serum creatinine level and we can regularly monitor the hearing of the patient by high frequency audiometry high frequency audiometry means it is uh, 16 kilohertz or 18 kilohertz audiometry normally the audiometry we use are of 8 kilohertz and uh, this can miss the early autotoxicity and if a pregnant woman is exposed to autotoxic drugs then the fetus is also exposed 
and uh, after birth auto acoustic emission test should be done for the baby and uh, when the baby is a uh, uh, little bit older three years or more we can do PERA test and behavioral audiometry test so number one was the prevention and protection number two was early recognition of portrait toxicity number three is the treatment the treatment is uh, when there is uh, cochlear toxicity that is impaired hearing we can use hearing aid or cochlear implantation and when there is vestibular toxicity that is a patient experiencing imbalance uh, we have to advise the vestibular rehabilitation therapy this is in short from autotoxicity thanks for watching goodbye for today